for your PMP and KEPM exam, are you ready to practice some questions? Let's get started with these five easy questions that you should definitely not miss when you take your KEPM and PMP exam. During this quiz, when I read a question to you, you'll have a couple seconds to come up with the correct answer. But since you may not have enough time, pause the video right after I read the question. And in the comment section below, write down your question number, your answer, and a comment of why you think it's correct. And afterwards, hit that comment button. And I can respond and give you the best coaching, mentorship, and advice to help accelerate your learning curve and you'll be ready to dominate and pass your CAPM and PMP exam. Be sure to stay until the end of the video for an analysis of how well you did and what areas you should focus on leveling up for your exam. So without further ado, let's get started. Question 1. All of the following are true statements which characterize a project, except which statement below? A. A project has a beginning and an end. B. A project creates a unique service. C. A project results in a positive benefit to support the organization. Or D, a project is ongoing and tied to repetitive work. The correct answer is D. Because a project is a temporary endeavor which has a defined start and an end date, a project is not tied to supporting daily ongoing, manufacturing, or operational work that is repetitive in nature. Question 2. Which of the following best describes a project? Running a 24-7 operational facility? B resolving an immediate issue tied to production delays, C, development of a new electronic LED system, or D, coordinating training of the team for using a new software. In an organization, all activities split up into either projects or operational day-to-day -day activities. All projects are responsible for creating a unique product or a service. Therefore, the answer is C, developing a new electronic LED system since this results in a unique product. Question 3. Which are the two best examples of a project? Running a 24-7 machine shop? B. Development of a training program for new software users? C. Repairing an HVAC system due to a leak in the manufacturing line? Or D. Construction of a new railroad network system? The correct answers are B and D, since these are both temporary endeavors which result in a new service or product. Key words which signify that this is a project are development of and construction. Another way to help identify which is a project is by asking yourself a couple questions. Is this something that is temporary in endeavor? Does it result in a unique product, service, or result? Does it drive additional value to the organization, such as an increased return on our investment or an increased market share? And lastly, does it help drive change in the organization to an improved future state? Question 4. All of the following are not examples of a project except A. Changing the tires on your car B. Creating a weekly analytics report for management C. Development of an online database software system or D. Responding to customer calls in a call center If you chose C, then you are correct because it is a temporary endeavor that is not associated with operational maintenance work. The development of a software system classifies as a project because it results in a new product, service, or result. Question 5. Which team member is responsible for developing the business case for a project? A. Project sponsor. B. Stakeholders. C. Functional manager. Or D. Project manager. The correct answer is A. This question is focused on who is involved with creating a business case. The business case is a document which provides the financial justification and the benefits for investing in a project. Although the project manager is the one who leads the team and is responsible for achieving the goals of the project, it is the project sponsor who is accountable for developing the project's business case. So how did you do? Which section did you score the highest in? And which section did you score the lowest in? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, what topics were the most challenging for you and what are other topics that you'd like me to cover in future upcoming videos to help you pass your CAPM and PMP certification exam? Let me know by writing it down in the comment section below. And by the way, thank you so much for checking out today's video. Subscribe for more CAPM and PMP training videos just like this one. And if you haven't done so already, smash that like button and give this video a huge thumbs up. I'm Alvin the PM bringing you the best tips and tricks in project management, and I'll see you in next week's video.